Hi, I'm Tim Morris, the founder of Fast Tracks Hobby Works, and I'd like to tell you about a new product line that we're about to release called the Diamond Line. The Diamond Line lets you build crossings like this, or this, or this, or this, or this. Quickly and easily in about an hour. This one might take a little longer. Did you ever hear about the railroad rag? Toot, 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 it's a joyful jag. See the train a going round the curve. Mmm, I feel that engine swerve. Engineers are humming a peculiar strain. In your heart, you get a pain. All the people on the train have caught the drag. Now everybody's humming that railroad rag. Oh, oh, that railroad rag. Oh, oh, that railroad rag. It's all... So what is the diamond line? Well, the Diamond Line is the name we've given to a system that we have developed for building crossings. Crossings typically are quite difficult to make, uh, mainly because there's so many pieces of rail uh, needed to be precisely formed in order to get a, a good performing crossing. You want a crossing that when something rides through it, it goes through nice and smooth. You don't notice uh, any bumping or, or jumping around of the equipment as it rides through. And getting that can be quite challenging. So what we've come up with is a series of precision castings that we have designed and made in-house here at Fast Tracks. This one here, for example, is a, what is this? It's an HO scale 30 degree code 83 crossing. This is cast in nickel silver, has lots of nice detail. Uh, this is the another casting from that same crossing. We've made these castings to be compatible with laser cut ties that we also produce. So here is the matching laser cut tie for uh, HO scale 30 degree code 83 diamond line crossing. Cast into the, each of the castings at the bottom are these little bosses that protrude out. And they're designed to press into slots cut into the laser cut ties. So this makes it very easy to put together a crossing. They simply just press into place like that. Everything lines up. In addition to working with the laser cut ties, they also work with standard rail. This is some microengineering code 83 rail. And we've designed a, uh, a rail joiner at the, end of the, at the end of the casting, very similar to what the prototype does, that the rail slides into like so. And what's nice about this is you can use any length of rail that you want. If you've got a nice big long piece like this, you can join it in and extend it onto the end of your crossing. So you can have a crossing with very long leads like this going in and out of it. You can see where we've, the rail has been slid into the castings here. There's eight pieces of rail that goes into the, uh, the four castings. So I'll do a, a quick demonstration of, of how they all uh, fit together to produce a crossing. When these are going to ship, which shouldn't be too much longer now, they will be shipped on little pieces like this. Um, these these little wooden blocks serve co a bunch of different purposes in the diamond line. One is it allows us to identify what the casting is because we anticipate having many, many dozens of these crossings available. There's two different types of castings in a, in a typical crossing. There's the center casting, which is this one here, and it goes into the middle. And then there's what we call the K frog, because it kind of looks like a K. These are the ones that go on the outside. In addition to that, there's the two guardrails that join onto the casting, and we make those separately. Um, when we cast these, there's actually um, extra material on the ends of them. So when they're cast, uh, when, they're, when they're sprued up and, and cast in metal, we have to have a way to feed the metal into the actual thing. So there's a piece on the end here. 
and we cut these long, press them in, and we use this gauge or this uh, this block as a guide to shape them, to sand them to the right length, nice and precisely. And the same on here. So when you receive these, that's already been done by us. We, we're going to knock these down so they're the right size. The other thing that this is very handy for is for cleaning up um, the castings, and it's before using them, it's nice to have them polished and we're going to include a stainless steel wire brush with this with the kit and allows you to give a real good scrub and it holds it for you while you do it and it just gives it a nice polish on all the surfaces so when you get these parts these are simply popped off um, like that and these are no longer needed so we just pop off the six individual castings that make up a crossing they can be a little tight, so I use something to pry them off. Or you could use the edge of a knife. I'm just using a file here. It's probably not the best thing to use because it's not good for the file, but I don't know where I put my knife. So the center crossings are quite simple. They just press in to the ties like that. And it's a nice, nice snug fit. You give it a good squeeze, it's not gonna, not gonna come out of there. Okay, with the center frog in place, then we're gonna put on one of the two K frogs. And I like to start those by first inserting the guardrails. And there's a, a slot or a groove in the laser cut ties that those pins will line into, like that. So I put one there, and you wanna put it so these little blocks are pointing in. And then there's one here, like so. And then now we're going to put the K-Frog uh, frog in place. It's this one, actually. And to do that, we have to just slightly lift up the guardrail and drop it in like that. And it'll all kind of snap down in place there. Yeah, you can see how nice all that lines up. The guardrails, the K-Frog, center frog. And then the rail simply plugs into the rail joiner cast into the end of the casting like that so you put one on either piece of rail on either end just slides in and the whole thing is glued together using good old fly wand i'll go into more detail on that when we do our uh, instructional video let me just throw the rest of this in place so you can see how quickly this really does come together Give those a squeeze, that's good. And our two guardrails. One there. And one here. The last K-Frog goes in there. Let's press it all down. There's our castings are all in place. And that's lit. Beautiful. Also included with the uh, with parts are a couple of sanding blocks, and we thought we'd uh, make these up and send them along so you get the uh, the right type of sandpaper that you want to use to polish the top of the rail. Uh, we have two grits, 320s for roughing and 600 for finishing, and it's uh, they're they're glued onto a laser cut block, it makes it nice and flat, nice and easy to polish top of the rail. So these castings they have a bit of a, of a surface of a rough surface on it when they're a raw casting and we just want to polish that up so we get a nice shiny surface like on this one that's that's already done and that's easily done using these little blocks you just quick pass over the top normally this would be done after everything is all soldered and glued in place so there's a rough pass on there and then we'll Use the 600 grit. Give it a finish pass. I'm not going to do the whole thing. I'll just do one of the center frogs. Like that. And you can you can spend quite a bit of time to get this really nice and polished up. These things do a wonderful job of, of uh, cleaning everything up as well. And then I like to finish off with a uh, track cleaner, uh, like a bright boy, one of these. These are even finer than the 600 grit, and it gives you a really nice polish. Like so. There, see how nice 
this how it looks. And that's ready to be uh, um, painted up. Actually, no, there's one more step. Sorry, I forgot. Um, there's pockets on the end of each of the laser cut ties. And we include four PC board ties. So when you have the, uh, when you have all your parts in place, the rail inserted into the end of the casting and soldered in, then we add a PC board tie. I'll snip one of these off here. Put a PC board tie. Set it into the pocket. Do this one sitting down flat, like so. And solder our rail in place. When the soldering is all done, this little outer square piece gets snipped off with a knife. And that leaves you with your crossing. What that does is it locks these rails all in place and in perfect gauge at the end of the end of the crossing. You're ready to join this onto the rest of your layout. The castings are made in such a way that the gaps are already there, um, so you don't have to cut any gaps. And these um, are DC or DCC compatible. We highly recommend using a frog juicer available from us or Tam Valley to control the polarity of the frogs. It's super easy, it's one wire to each of the switched frogs, which is this one. Um, you just set a feeder wire onto the side of the rail or even onto the tie, one there, one there, goes down to the frog juicer. If you're using DCC, when the train approaches the crossing, if this is the wrong polarity, it switches it for you. Otherwise, you have to do it the traditional way from a, a switch machine using a, a relay, and it would switch this frog relative to the route of the turnout that's feeding in it. So if you had a turnout switch that's going to cause a train to go this way, it'll flip it one way or the other way. When they're done and all painted up and ballasted, then they really shine. You can see that nice nice bold detail. They got that nice familiar beefy look of a crossing. Looks great on any layout. And they run nice and smooth, smooth as glass. The stuff goes through there, no problem at all. So that's how the, uh, the diamond line system uh, works. When we release, we're gonna release uh, all the popular sizes. So this, is a, this is a 90 degree crossing uh, in HO scale. Uh, this one here is a 45. The one I was doing uh, is a 30. This one here is a 19 degree crossing. So we can do anything from um, 14 degrees up to 90 degrees. Uh, we're going to do all the standard sizes and we're uh, playing with the idea of offering custom sizes. So you just tell us the angle you want. We'll develop it uh, for you for a surcharge and then it'll get added to our line. So that way we can build up the line uh, to all the popular sizes. In addition to single crossings, when the, when the line is released, we're also going to have the option to build double diamonds, like this one. Um, the only difference between a single and a double is the laser cut ties you receive are cut for a double diamond and you get twice as many castings. We're also going to do uh, quads, um, so four diamond crossings. Same thing, you get the laser cut ties that match and a whole lot of castings to go with it. And they go together very easily. Um, not much different than what I just showed you, just takes a, a lot longer because it's two to four times as many bits and pieces. However, it's a showpiece on your layout when it's done. These things just, they look, they look stunning. Um, So designing the diamond line system has been a quite a long project. We started this uh, well over a year ago uh, when we originally bought some of the casting equipment and started to dabble with the idea of, of making frog castings. Um, the idea was actually from 2012 was when I first started um, to pursue castings. It just seemed like the natural progression for the Fast Tracks line to go from the, the built up assemblies to um, adding a, a casting option as well to our to our track work and back in 2012 when i was at the uh the nmra train show in um, where was that Cal somewhere in california there was a, a vendor there and he had some absolutely stunning brass parts that he had cast and I asked him you know how did you make those masters and he said i had them 3d printed um, and 
my experience with 3D printing at the time was it was pretty poor quality. Um, it, you know, anything that it was the stuff that you would get from Shapeways, and it looked like it was made out of sand. It was it, it, to me, I didn't see that it really had much of a future. But he said that it wasn't done with Shapeways; it was done using a wax printer, which was kind of intriguing. I'd never heard of one of those before. Um, he says it's typically used by jewelers. So when I got home, I did a little bit of research and I, I found um, a place nearby that had one that could do some printing. So I sent off some uh, frog castings, uh, drawings that I made, some models, and had them printed in, the, in wax. And what came back was really impressive, beautiful quality. Um, the problem was uh, those wax printers were the price of a car. So they were, uh, you know, back in 2012. That was there was no way that we had the uh, the capital to to pursue it. Um, I played with the idea of maybe having that company print castings for us on demand, and then we would or print the masters, uh, the wax masters on demand for us. But they're so fragile and brittle that uh, they typically would show up broken uh, after two or three times. Uh, I just I give up with it. Um, with the idea of having somebody do them for us. So uh, that project was kind of shelved. Uh, in 2012, we didn't have the space to do it anyways. We were in a fairly small building. So fast forward eight years, um, we have, you know, we've grown significantly fast tracks, uh, both in, in the space and uh, in our product line. So I thought, you know, maybe it's time to go back to that project and, and revisit it. So we bought a 3D printer. We bought one of the uh, the wax 3D printers to to try, um, and we also invested in a full casting operation uh, in house. Uh, my thinking was the only the only way to be interested in doing castings is if we do it all ourselves. I didn't want to have somebody else's production schedule or priorities in, into our product line. That's been our experience that you end up with delays and waiting for something else to get done, and it's. It's very frustrating. So I thought, how hard could it be? Let's let's uh, let's jump in on both feet. And it was a bit of a risk because there's no way to know what the uptake for this product is uh, or what is involved in producing it until you do it. So it was a, a lot of uh, a lot of investment uh, up front to do it. Um, and it really is hard to do. It took a long time to figure it out. The type of casting we're doing, there's very few people that do it. So there's there's nobody, I didn't have any mentor, there's nobody that we could work with. So uh, it was just trial and error, uh, which is why it took uh, so long to get a, a process that allows us to build, to uh, or to get castings, you know, with this level of quality. Um, a lot of false starts, a lot of, uh, you know, try this, try that, you know, we thought we had it you know, a whole system in place and then we find it's it's not there. It doesn't have the quality that we need or what we want. Um, but we finally got it. Um, it was uh, a lot of work and it was also very enjoyable work. I really, uh, I like that kind of work. Um, so we've, we've come up with a end-to-end -end process uh, for the design where we can uh, design any crossing in what we want and we have software generates the majority of the parts uh, for us and then from that we can extract everything we need for the printers to to make our, our masters and then we go through a lost wax casting process and make our production castings. Um, even that process has evolved significantly from where we began to where we are now. Um, so right now the the, uh, the product line is developed. It's uh, we're we're happy with the design. Um, the the steps that we're at is to uh, currently as of December uh, 2020 is to get them added to our website and um, make more detailed documentation on how to uh, how to use the system. I don't anticipate that'll take too much longer. Um, we were ready to release all in October, uh, but I I. The original way that we were doing the center frog, the K frogs, was actually, and I'll show it to you here, it's kind of hard to see it. Uh, it was done from two castings uh, with the guardrail already as part of the casting. And then 
they had to be filed very precisely and then joined together and soldered uh, together using the, uh, the laser cut ties as a uh, fixture to hold it. And it worked fine, but I, I, was, I was concerned people were going to struggle with, with the, uh, the soldering of the castings. These are kind of bulky to solder onto and getting the filed, the two halves filed precise enough. Um, so a very late game design change uh, where I decided to remove the guardrails from the casting and make those separate, which allowed me to make this from a single piece. I won't get into the technical reasons why um, we had to do it the way we did, but it, it worked. Uh, so we were able to um, make that change and makes this a lot easier for the end user to do. So we're, we're very happy with that design change. Uh, but that added about a month, so that got us to, you know, uh, beginning of November, mid-November. And then uh, the machine that cuts our PC board ties failed, um, and I knew it was failing, and I kept putting it off and putting it off, to hoping to get this product released before getting a new machine and spending the time required to, to develop the new fixture and the tool length for that. But it, it decided, no, it wasn't going to wait, so that delayed things for another few weeks. So that machine is now up and running. It's happily cutting new ties, uh, which is great because um, we were worried about, uh, uh, you know, uh, an interruption or PC board tie line. That's never good. So that's up and running now, and we're back to the casting project. Um, it's been a, a interesting, an interesting project, and I'm, we're pretty exciting about it. Uh, or we're, we're pretty excited about it. You will be too. So we're going to release uh, HO scale first, um, code 70 and code 83, probably code 100. Once we get our workflows down, uh, then we're going to branch into end scale uh, crossings as well. Um, we've got two new people hired um, in training to learn to learn the process for me on how to do it. Um, they'll be starting uh, before Christmas, and hopefully uh, by the new year, we'll be shipping these things out. Thanks a lot.